Hello everyone and welcome to part two of our 2017 Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip video series. In this video I'm going to show you how we went from Clarenville to Gander. Now this is the third day overall in our trip but it's only the second day on the trail. I'm going to show you here on my website. I'm going to click on the GPS and map section. Then I'm going to click over here on the map picture and it'll bring it up in another window. It'll do the same for you if you go to my website. Now here's the entire island. I'm just going to go over here and get the legend out of the way by the collapsing the legend so you can see the whole map. So we started the day in Clarenville. I'm just going to zoom in here on Clarenville. If you watched our video from yesterday, you'll know that six of us stayed at St. Jude's Hotel and the other six of us stayed over here at Shoal Harbor Pond. Now, uh, we left the pond, took this purple trail here back to the main rail bed, which is colored in blue and we waited for the other fellows to catch up to us in the hotel. We headed west, and then we uh, took a little pit stop where this camera icon is here. If you click on that, you'll see over here it's a waterfall. You can click on the picture, and it'll show you what the waterfall looks like. This is from a few years ago, and there's a few pictures here. Now there's three waterfalls there all together, believe it or not, when you get to this section. Um, if it's a really nice day, depending on what time of the year you go there, in the summer, you can, the waterfall is right here. You can get out and go in the water. It's pretty nice. And if you don't mind exploring or hiking a bit, you follow this trail in. There's a second waterfall uh, up here. I think it's about here. And then you keep going in and there's then there's another uh, third one, which is way up here, I believe. So it's actually quite nice if you don't mind taking a half an hour or so to do a little bit of hiking up there. The next thing we did after we left there, we headed all the way up to Port Blanford to get some gas. There's kind of two ways you can get to the gas station in Port Blanford. Once you come to this intersection here, you can just follow this road in on this purple line, which is almost exactly one kilometer long. Or you can follow this orange trail here, which takes you through the woods. Uh, and it's a little, it's more fun uh, than just riding the highway, but it's not nearly as easy as taking uh, this secondary road here. Uh, there's usually some mud and water and so forth in here. If you want to see both, you can, you know, on your way up, take this road into the gas station and take the orange trail out, which is what we did this year. Uh, so then after we got gas, we stopped at um, Terra Nova National Park, where this little picnic table icon here is on my map. This is really a nice spot. And by the time you get here, it'll probably be lunch or close to lunch. This is a bridge right here. And right after the bridge you take this little trail it takes you into this open field in a clearing in here and that's a really great spot if you brought your own food or a little barbecue even to set up and actually you can see the water uh, here a bit of the waterfall in the picture and here's a better one I'll blow up a picture from the bridge from a few years ago so you know we usually stay there for 45 minutes or so and then we head west again on the trail and let's see here The next stop for us would be Gamble. Sometimes we stop right on the trail too, just for, uh, you know, if we want a break to talk to each other and stuff. But um, if you zoom in really close to the town of Gamble here, you'll see there's a gas station back here, right off the, off the rail. And then there's a little pub in here called the Trailway Pub and Eatery. And um, if you click on that little icon I put in here with the glass, you can see what the, uh, the outside of the building looks like. They also have a nice patio on the back there it is there in that picture so if it's a nice day and you don't mind sitting out there if you want to have a drink before you get back on the trail to head to gam uh sorry to gander it's probably about another hour drive to gander from here they have this patio and it has a nice view of the water and then uh, if you continue heading west along the trail here's gander now as soon as you get into gander you're going to pass the airport here uh, if you're hungry and you want something to eat and you probably will be uh, depending on where you're staying, there's a restaurant right here called Rosie's, which I have marked. They have great food in there, and the service is really good. Um, this purple line actually kind of takes you through town, but it is considered the rail bed. Uh, there's a Walmart here and so forth, so if you need to stop there to get some supplies. Um, this year, what me and my friends did is we stayed down here uh, at the Comfort Inn. So what we did is we followed this trail right here, and this... Uh, is a paved piece of trail going through here this green line and then um, we take this orange trail it's not really a trail it's a road it's a paved road through a, an industrial park but it's only about 800 meters and once you get to the end of it you're going to come to an intersection 
but and actually instead of having a ride on the road just before you get to the main intersection at the highway you'll see this trail right here follow that and it'll take you right into the parking lot of uh, there's an a and w restaurant an so gas station and the comfort inn motel is right here and attached to the comfort inn motel is a jungle gyms restaurant they have uh, pretty good food in there too so if you want to wait to get to the comfort inn if that's where you're going you, you can go in there and get something to eat or there's a mary brown's fried chicken right next to it and so forth and then the next day of course we head back out jump on the trail and um, head to badger but i'll talk about that in another video for those of us that were camping this was our campsite the next morning usually what we do is we get up pack up all of our gear put everything away make sure everything's uh secured nicely on the bike so nothing falls off and uh, we don't want to leave anything behind we always pack everything out um, everything we take in we take out with us now first thing this morning uh, you can see by the picture of the tent here it got a little windy that night um, and I didn't put any tent pegs down of mine I just throw all the gear in because it was heavy enough to keep it in place but it got a little deformed as you can see from the picture and just before we were about to leave uh, Bruce noticed that he had a flat on his back left tire on his uh, Can-Am Commander, which was really unfortunate because he had uh, just bought a brand new set of Blackwater Evolution tires, and uh, here's a bit of a video of him fixing it up. Oh, I hate putting this in that tire. It's a nice new tire. Which way did it go? I think it's not turning. Okay, we get Bruce's tire uh, all fixed up and then we headed down the beach here to the trail that brought us into the lake here. That uh, trail is probably a few kilometers. It was kind of fun. Uh, you had grass on either side and it was mostly sand and a bit of gravel. Uh, this trail took us out to a main road which is wide enough gravel road for vehicles and uh, we were able to get some good speeds up on that because the road was in nice condition and then uh, just before we got out we found this gravel pit or uh, kind of a mixture of gravel and sand pit I guess and the fellas played around for a bit because we had some time to kill before we uh, waited for the guys at the hotel to catch up to us. Okay, this is one of those sections where we decided to uh, just play around a bit and uh, the trail is in such good shape here and on the other road that we get up to that we can get up to some high speeds and uh, you know I've had people ask me do you have to drive that fast all day uh, to get to where you're going in the Newfoundland trip and the answer is absolutely not uh, if you read through my blog uh, I explain on there too really if you're averaging maybe 35 to 40 kilometers an hour throughout the day uh, that's all you need to do to get from point A to point B every day to get this trip done. Um, and basically that's pretty much what we do all the time too, but every now and then, like I said, uh, on straight stretches like this, we, we kind of open it up a little bit uh, just to have a little bit of fun, but we don't drive like that all day. So this is the first waterfall. Uh, of the section where I told you where there was three. You actually have to climb up those rocks to get up to the other sections. This one is right off the trail and uh, right next to the Trans-Canada Highway, so you can probably hear traffic going by in the background.
Yeah, that's the rough. Not that good. Bug. This bridge that we're on here is about 150 meters long. It's one of the longer ones that we cross on the trip. And uh, it's going over the Southwest River. We're just pulling into Port Blanford here. Um, if you remember earlier, I told you there was two ways you could get in uh, to the gas station there. One is following a trail through the woods or one is going on a road. So we opted to take the road in uh, right up here. It's about a kilometer ride in right here. And then uh, on the way back out, we took the trail. We usually uh, get in here, we get some gas, a bottle of water, a Red Bull or something like that. And then we usually sit around for about 15 minutes and talk and then hit the trail again. Okay, this is the trail that takes you into the gas station or away from the gas station back to the rail bed. Uh, it's a much shorter distance. It's probably only half or two thirds of the road, but it takes you even longer just because you're, it's slow going. Now it's fun, like we always like going this way because it's a little more challenging. Uh, and a little farther up the trail here, depending on what the weather's been like. Sometimes you can get some deep water and a little bit of mud, so if that's not for you, you probably want to stick to the road, but really it's nothing that you probably couldn't get through in two-wheel drive. It looks it looks worse than it is here. The GoPro uh, camera that I'm using, I have on my chin and my helmet right now, and uh, I'm, always, I, uh, I'm always surprised when I watch the video back that I hear other people talking back to me a little bit. You can kind of hear it, it's muffled, but the speakers for the Bluetooth headsets are up inside the helmet, up by my ears, and I'm surprised at all that uh, you can hear what Bill is saying. It does seem much nicer than it used to be. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in low. <laughs> Bill's going to be the guinea pig here. Uh, there was a lot of rain, so the mud hole here looks pretty deep, but actually I don't think it turned out to be too bad at all. Yeah, I just saw that. I'll just say I'm, I was following the leader. Okay, just to give you a quick recap here, this is the bridge that we just went over. And uh, short distance after the bridge was that road we drove up. And then that road is uh, 1.04 kilometers. This is the trail we took back out and it's, uh, it's 500 meters, so about half that distance. Then we get to the trail back to the rail bed. And then our next stop here will be Terra Nova National Park. And uh, this is the little spot I was telling you about earlier where we uh, you cross a bridge, there's a little waterfall here, and there's a great little picnic area here. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Uh, one, I'm assuming we're all together. Hopefully they are. I can't tell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Unfortunately, this day was one of the days where we had rain. Uh, it's not that big a deal, really, as long as you're dressed for it. Uh, you get lots of water holes and you have to wipe your helmet off here and there. Uh, if you've got a, an ATV with a windscreen on the front, you're definitely going to want to have Rain-X on there. I even put it on my helmet if you're going fast enough, the water beads right off. But um, this section of the trail, there's lots of whoops, as you can see, and sometimes they fill with water and they make some uh, pretty uh, big puddles to splash through. We kind of like that stuff for us. Uh, we don't mind that, but some people do. Um, you can also see here, see here rather in this section of the trail that the alder brushes are growing in quite far. Uh, you just have to make sure on sections of trail like this when you're going around the corners and curves that you slow down a bit because sometimes they're so narrow that you, uh, you can't see uh, very far ahead to see if people are coming the other direction. This bridge that we're coming up to is uh, the Terra Nova Bridge. 
it uh, was out last year for 2016 and there was no way across this water it was too wide and too deep so you had to take a big detour it was about all together was around 40 kilometers so it was uh, you know it added an hour plus to the trip that day but uh, luckily uh, late in the year last year earlier in 2017 they got this bridge uh, back up and running so it's good for the snowmobilers and it's also good for the ATVers. Okay, yeah, you can hear the rain. Uh, it's pelting pretty hard now. It would have been really nice this particular day to have the windshield at least in place uh, to keep the rain off. It would have helped us stay a little warmer as well, but uh, I didn't put it on this trip because I, uh, it's a little hard to see through with the GoPro camera. Plus, if it's dry, which it is most days, the dust gets all over it, and then you have to stop off and, and clean it off. So I didn't want to have to bother to do that. But if I could have stored it someplace, the, if I could have stored the windshield somehow, I would have brought it to put it on. But uh, I, I just don't have the space for it. Every now and then we stop just to make sure that everybody is still behind us. This year we had the biggest group ever, 12 guys, 11 machines. So uh, I was worried it might be a little difficult to make sure everyone stayed together, but we had a really, really good group of guys and everyone stuck together really well. And if anybody had any uh, breakdowns, uh, actually we didn't have any breakdowns. We had a few flats. So if you look in the rearview mirror now and then you didn't see someone for a bit, we'd just stop and we'd wait for them to catch up to us. Or sometimes we'd go back. Right back there where that road went backwards. That's the uh, dirt trail to the gas station. Here's the pub. We're at the pub. One of the nice things about the pub, other than the obvious, of course, is that it's only about an hour or so away from Gander. So it's a nice way to end uh, off this what? last leg of the we trip. We back our machines in down here and get a picture of them with the water. <laughs> see in the background there there's probably about seven uh, side by sides or so that showed up uh, at the pub when we were there so uh, we decided to make sure we get up on the trail before they did we uh, travel faster than those guys we didn't want to get stuck behind them we get stuck behind them a little earlier they have a Kubota in their group and uh, it's very limited to what it can do for anything kind of off-road so whenever they were hitting whoops and stuff they were only going about 15 kilometers an hour or so The last 15 or 20 kilometers or so on the way to Gander is like this. It's almost all straightaways, and uh, the sun was trying to peak out and it dried up, so it made for a really good run for the last little bit before we got to Gander. Oh man, I hope this is sunny now for the rest of the week. <laughs> man, I got a bit of, bit of a nose dog there. Where we're at right now, we're actually in Gander. Uh, this is actually still considered the trailway, even though it's a paved section. We just went past Walmart and a bunch of stores, and now we're on our way to our, uh, to our motel. Once we got to the hotel, we checked in, dragged all of our gear inside. I think everybody got cleaned up, and then we went down to the, uh, the restaurant, which was next door, Jungle Gyms, and had a bite to eat. And everybody was pretty low-key that night, and then uh, went to bed, and we hit the trail again early the next morning.